Okay, so let's go and do this. Um, the first step is for us to connect to our UI, right? So we're going to go and define a some sort of maybe an input, so private um, edit text input. That's where we're going to get our end from. Uh, private radio um, radio group. Um, that's going to be our type and private uh, text view this is going to be our output so those are those are the UI elements that we're going to be interested in over here so now that we've here initialized the UI we can say okay this dot input um, is going to essentially come from we need to go and cast this um, it'll come from whoops um, what's going on for some reason the edit the end button doesn't work as expected uh, su super dot find view by id and so id is going to be r dot id dot input so we've got that um, we can do the same thing for the output so well more or less the same thing this is going to be a output this is of course we have to cast it into the uh, the text view and in between we'll have this dot type equals radio group super super dot find view by id r dot id dot type and i now think we have the three that we care about and of course the last one is the button we want to know when the button is actually clicked so we can say um button button equals you know button super dot find view by id there's other ways of doing this, of course, but this is just uh, simple enough to hopefully make sense. The real objective here is not to focus on the UI, but really on the JNI part. So now that we have the button, we can go and say uh, button. So let's go and import this. So Command Shift O does the import, or or, in, or if you're on a Windows or a Linux machine, it'll be a Control Shift O organize imports. And so now button dot set on click listener this we can make ourselves be the on click listener um, of course because we are not yet an on click listener this is red so we can then have eclipse help us by allowing us to be an on click listener so i the how i got here i click on the red button or and now i can select this double clicking on it adds the on click listener as well as the appropriate import statement here and now this complains because we're not really still an on-click listener. So we click on this and say add the unimplemented methods. There's only one method, which is essentially the on-click. Here's the view that was clicked on. Now, what we do in the view is we actually now need to you know, do what the user asked us to do, which is to find the n. Um, we then need to go and parse the string into a real n and then go and you know, do the calculation. So how do we do this? First of all, I'm going to say string s equals this dot input dot um, get text dot to string. Okay, so we now have something that's supposed to be an n, and we can go and parse it, or we can actually test for it. Well, if s is empty, and actually uh, Andrew already has something called text utils. If you do control space, it'll do an automatic import, is empty. S. So if this is already empty, which also includes null, then we can just go and say return. There's nothing for us to do. Okay. Otherwise, we can go and parse n. So we can go and actually assume. I mean, we could we should be handling errors, but let's keep it simple. So I'm going to say long n equals long dot parse long of s, and so we now essentially have the n. Now that we have the n, what we want to do is start a calculation. Now, let's do this a simple way, which is essentially we're going to go and check for what is the type, and then we're going to, based on the type, call the appropriate algorithm and then update our UI. So let's see. Um, I'm going to go and say switch this dot type dot get checked radio button id i'm interested in which radio button was actually checked um, now i want to go and say well case r dot id dot you know for example jr so i know that's what the user clicked on 
um, I'm gonna you know figure out what basically what I should do. So presumably uh, this is where I actually invoke the appropriate algorithm. So how do I do this? Well, here's what I'll do. I'll initialize the result. So long result um, equals to, I don't know, nothing, zero. And then I'm gonna say result, so result equals um, fib lib dot jr of n. That's the easy one. That's actually not in any way, shape, or form uh, uh, NDK specific because this is all pure Java. And I'm going to just duplicate this case four times. So this is going to be a ji, for example. Whoops. Ji. This could be a ji. This over here could be an nr. And this is going to be an nr. And then finally, this one is going to be ni. And this is ni. So we now have a way of initializing the result based on what the selection the user typed in. And so now that we're done with this, um, I guess one more thing I'll do just for fun is I'll also measure the time that it takes to do this. So I can say, for example, long t equals system dot current time millis. Um, or you can actually go and use the time. Uh, this is using the wall time. There's also, you know, getting time for the, you know, from the initial boot up of the system, which is probably slightly better, but this is what most Java developers do anyways. Um, t equals system dot current time millis minus t. And so now we know how long this operation took. And so now what we can do is we can actually go and create a string, for example, something that will update the UI. So we can say, um, you know, this dot output dot set text. And now the text could be some sort of a string, for example, um, fib, let's actually format it, string dot format, um, fib of some sort of percent D, which is going to be the N equals percent D, the result in percent D milliseconds. So we're gonna just need to fill in the, the percent D's, so the N result time, and we now are pretty much done. Now let's go and check this out, save this. Um, the next step is to try to run this. Um, that said, before I actually go and execute this, um, some of you may be thinking, well, hey, it's recursive, you know, Fibonacci is not that fast. In fact, you know, if N was something like, you know, 20, 30, this can easily cause an ANR, whether here or here. ANR stands for application unresponsive and is a result of essentially us locking up the UI thread. Don't forget all of this happens on the UI thread because this is all firing from the on-click event handler. So instead of doing it this way, which will work, but it's not necessarily optimal, it's probably better for us to um, do this in some sort of a async task. Now, so what I'll do is I'll actually, you know, refactor this code somewhat. I should have done this right, right from the get-go. But um, just to be, you know, just to make it kind of nice and easy, I'm going to go and do it now. Um, so here's a couple of things I'll do. First of all, I'll make the N be final. Um, and you'll see in a moment why. Um, then what I'll do is I'll create a new async task, control space, async, oops, async task. Um, and I'm going to go and say that the input to the async task is just void. Um, we're just going to pass everything through these copies of the stack. There's no progress. And the result is just going to be a string, for example. Um, so we're creating a new async task, and then in this async task, there's going to be, and we're going to finally execute it at the end, which is going to come in later. Um, and in this async task, we're going to have two things, as the, the, the code, the method that executes in the background, which is the one that takes a long time, and the method that runs in the foreground on the UI thread uh, handling the final result. So the method that ha happens in the background is called doing background. So we can actually have Eclipse fill in the blanks for us. So here's that method, and then there's going to be another method, which I'm going to go to source override implement methods, which is going to call on post execute. That will actually fire when our code in the doing background is finally done executing, and then is able to transfer 
this output string into the input so that this executes on the correct thread. So um, let's go and move some code around. I'm going to take this, this code, which is essentially the, 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 the code that takes a long time. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to go and move it inside of this doing background. OK. Um, it's, of course, complaining that, you know, it's complaining that I don't have the type. So it doesn't really, you know, where is the type going to come from? Um, just to make it slightly, let's actually uh, make it slightly simpler. I'm just going to go and change this to say Fibonacci, Fibo, Fibonacci activity dot this dot type. Um, of course, I have to learn how to type myself. Fibonacci activity dot this dot type. So that this is the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can reference to this type variable that exists over here uh, in another class. I can make this more optimal by making type not be private and so on and so on. But that's not really the the, the objective here. So um, that's this part. But uh, this method is supposed to return some sort of a string, and yet I'm not returning anything. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take this string, which we would have normally done or, or return. I'm going to take that string and go and return it right here. So return this. Done. So now what I need is to take that string that's going to come from here, from the doing background, and update the UI in, this, in post execute, which is running on the correct thread or will run on the correct thread, which is where it's safe to do, update the UI. So again, I no longer I'm gonna you know just like the, like I did here to reference this type. I went and said Fibonacci activity dot this. Here I'm gonna say Fibonacci activity dot this dot output dot set text, and I'm just gonna say result. Um, so now I'm essentially done. Um, the only thing that's somewhat kind of you know missing is it'd be nice for me to maybe create some sort of a dialogue. Uh, that will tell the user that, hey, their calculation is taking place. So how do I do this? Well, for example, I can go right here and say something like final, um, say, progress dialogue, progress dialogue, uh, dialogue equals, and then I can actually go and say progress dialogue dot show, uh, context is this, uh, the title is, I can just make the title be nothing. And then the message is maybe, I don't know, some sort of a, we have to figure out some sort of a message. Um, and then I'm going to say um, true, oops, true, uh, and then dot, and then close it. Uh, now I need to just define the message. Just in the interest of time, I'm going to hard code it and say, calculating calculating like this why do I have trouble typing so go like this and now that I have this dialogue that will show up I can go and down below dismiss this dialogue now that everything is done dot dismiss and so now I have some sort of a hopefully nice and easy to work dialogue so if I did everything correctly, we should now be able to uh, execute it. But uh, just to show you what the final result looks like, uh, we basically have an activity that implements the on-click listener. We have the three, uh, um, well, references to three of our UI elements or, or, or views. Uh, we then connect to our views. We prime the button to let us know when it gets clicked. We then have a, an on-click handler which extracts the the n or the input it parses it into a correct you know hopefully into it and doesn't fail into a, into a long and then goes over here in the on do in, in, an, in an async task executes the doing background which goes and based on the type that the user selected figures out essentially which of the Fibonacci library algorithms to run and then figures out the time it took to do this formats everything and goes and sends it back sends us back the result um, so that we can go and update the UI with the result. Um, I agree that this is not the best way to write async tasks. For example, you should not create them as anonymous in classes and you should support reattaching them 
uh, to the activity in case, for example, activity rotates uh, and gets recreated or device rotates and gets, gets recreated. Um, so, and of course, this is also not the most optimal way to create dialogues. We should be using on create dialogue, dialogue and so on and so on. But this is really just to, to kind of get some sort of a client application uh, built so we can test our Fibonacci uh, JNI code. Just to show you what we've done so far is we basically just built this part. Um, we now just have to package it all together and then at runtime we'll have this and hope everything works correctly, it should execute appropriately. Let's try this out.